What's good, YouTube? Deeker Jones here. And on today's episode of Overpowered Weapons and Fallout 4, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Gauss Rifle. The Gauss Rifle is what amounts to basically a railgun that can be held in your hand. It uses magnetic induction to propel a ballistic projectile at incredible speeds. Each shot from this weapon can be charged for maximum damage by keeping the trigger held for a moment before releasing. But it can only fire in one of two states. It either fires at fully charged or it fires at zero charge. You can't, for example, charge it up to 67% and then release the trigger. If you do that, all it will do is let go of the charge that it had without actually firing any rounds. It is important to note that when firing this weapon in VATS, it always fires as though it were fully charged, which is one of the things that makes this an extremely powerful weapon. The tooltip damage that you see on the weapon is what it will do outside of VATS whenever it is fully charged. If you fire it at a 0% charge, it will only do 50% of its base damage, so keep that in mind. I have seen several differing opinions about the new aesthetic of the weapon. If you're into that sort of thing, I, for one, I like it. I think it looks really cool. It's got a kind of prototype slash steampunk vibe to it, in particular with the Nixie tube display on the back of it that displays your charge for you. I think that was a really nice touch to it. Although, if it is supposed to be kind of like a prototype, it doesn't really explain why that's the only variant that you can find in the Commonwealth. You would expect that there would be, you know, some of the prototypes, some of the more sophisticated looking ones that you'll find in Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. I think it would have been kind of cool if they would have had the traditional Gauss rifle and then they had this one that was called like a prototype Gauss rifle. But enough of all that nonsense. You guys didn't come here to talk about how pretty this thing is. What you really want to know is, Deeker, does it fuck shit up? And the answer to that question is an unequivocal, duh, you clicked on a video called Overpowered Weapons. Now let's talk about the legendary affixes for just a second. Throughout all the video that you're going to be seeing here, the weapon that I am using is the two-shot variant. I use this one over the instigating variant because while technically it will do more first-shot damage against an enemy that has full health, uh, I prefer to have the more consistent damage of the two-shot for all of those various situations where things just don't go that way. So my personal recommendation is always try for the two-shot variant, as it will give you a pretty steady increase of about 60% additional damage per shot, which makes it the single most powerful weapon to use in the game if you are a sneaky type character. If you're using Mr. Sandman and a silencer on this weapon, it will outclass even the six crank laser musket without all that unneeded headache of having to hand crank the coil six times in order to get the most effective damage. In terms of pure convenience, this weapon completely outshines anything else you can use. There are literally only two weapons that even remotely compare to it in terms of damage, and that is, as I mentioned previously, the six crank laser musket and the fat man. Neither one of those are particularly convenient for steady combat, and only the fat man actually can out damage it when you take into account the silencer, Mr. Sandman, and a sneak attack critical. Now, in order to demonstrate the effectiveness of this weapon, I'm going to take you to one of my favorite testing grounds for any weapon, which is an area just to the southwest of the Suffolk County Charter School. This area can be located here on your Pip-Boy map. This is an unmarked location out in the swamp here, and when you get here, there's not a lot to it, but you will find a door. And when you open that door, it'll say, you look nice today. But this also triggers a leveled sentry bot. Now it's important to note, don't come here probably before around level 40, because it will not scale down below level 40. So if you're like level 35, it will spawn a level 40 sentry bot for you. 
But uh, there's a high probability that this Sentry Bot will be legendary as well. So this is a really good place to come in order to farm for particular legendary items that isn't as cheaty as the other legendary farming methods. You're still going to save scum. You're going to save before you open the door. And then you're going to open it, check to see if it's a legendary Sentry Bot. If it is, kill them. If not, reload. But doing this form of farming is not going to be able to guarantee you the ability to lock in the base type item that you want like other methods can. You can find links to the videos in order to do that uh, right here on the screen somewhere. And check those out if you want an easier way to farm for a particular type of item. Just do remember that legendary bots explode twice once they die. So don't just go charging in to your death to get that fat loot. So let's talk a little bit now about where to acquire one of these fantastic weapons. Now this weapon was intended to be a mid to late game addition to your arsenal. It will not start showing up on your standard vendors until after level 25. So, you know, don't bother trying to scour vendors for one of these before that. It is not very likely to drop at all until around level 30 or so. And the legendary variants will not start dropping until you are level 36 or higher. So if you intend to try to farm using the legendary farming methods, uh, you will not be able to get this until 36 plus. Now once you have completed the old guns quest for the Minutemen quest line, you will be able to purchase a unique variation of this weapon from Ronnie Shaw. And she only sells it during the day, so if you try to talk to her at night, you won't get the option to try to buy it. So talk to her during the day. And this version of it has a 50% additional limb damage to it. Very nice. If you're not looking to go farming for this and you just want one, that is a really solid way to get one without a whole lot of hassle. Now, Ronnie Shaw is really easy to locate. She spends the majority, if not all, of her day in the armory at the castle. But if you are not able to find her for some reason, just set up a bell in the castle and ring it, and all the settlers will come walking to you eventually, and she'll be among them. And the last bit to talk about is going to be the mods and perks that will affect this weapons and which ones you should go for. As far as modifications are concerned, it's really easy. You just want all of the best that you can get. The only real choice that there is is going to be which scope you go for. I personally like the recon scope because it's the only one that actually fits with the aesthetic of the weapon, if that matters to you. Uh, it's also the only weapon that the recon scope looks good on, in my opinion. Like, I use a regular long scope on all my other weapons because it just looks right, and I don't need the recon mod. And for the perks, in order to craft on this weapon, you are going to want maximum ranks in Gun Nut and Science. This one, like I said, is supposed to be a mid to late game edition, so it requires very high levels in both of those skills in order to actually modify it. For damage scaling, we are going to be looking at getting the Rifleman perk as our primary damage scaling. Despite its very bulky appearance, it is a rifle. It is not a heavy gun. So Rifleman is the way to go for your primary. Uh, you're also obviously Bloody Mess, Lone Wanderer, Black Widow, Lady Killer. All good perks for scaling your damage. If you are going the sneaky sneaky route, of course you're going to want Ninja and Mr. Sandman, as well as Deacon's Cloak and Dagger perk. Um, as I've said in other videos, make sure you get these in the right order. Get all three ranks of Ninja, get all three ranks of Mr. Sandman, then get Deacon's perk. Otherwise you might end up with a modifier that is not 6.3 times damage. And that's the highest one that you can get so far as anybody's been able to discover. Some of the secondary perks that I like to take for this weapon, since I primarily use it in VATS, I focus very heavily on your critical strike chances. Uh, get Crit Banker, get uh, better criticals. Grim Reaper Sprint is fantastic because you are going to be killing enemies in VATS with this weapon. Four Leaf Clover is great because you're always wanting to, to get criticals any way that you can. And I also like to use Gun Fu on this. Now, Gun Fu might be a little bit overkill, 
for this weapon. But as you saw in one portion of my gameplay footage going on in the background, which I'll put right here again, uh, you don't always get them. I mean, the big thing to do is to catch them with that sneak attack critical. So you always want to target the toughest enemy first, which is a little bit counterintuitive for gun Fu, because you can land a critical multiplied by the sneak attack modifier, and you will absolutely wreck any enemy in one shot. So you always want to have your sneak attack land on the biggest enemy first. And then from that point, you want to go pick the weaker target and then start moving your way back up the chain in order to successfully get everyone in the first round. And the final perk to really consider in your arsenal, now this one's a bit controversial because it is a bug perk, and that's of course McCready's Kill Shot perk. Uh, it's supposed to give you a 20% increase to headshots in VATS, but thanks to a decimal error, I'm assuming, on the coder's part, it actually gives you 2,000%. So it's pretty much a guaranteed headshot at any range, no matter what. If you can get the slightest bit of accuracy to show up on the head, it will be 95%. So this can be a little bit uh, detrimental to challenging gameplay because you will be able to wreck anything from absolute ridiculous distances. So this one's going to be up to you whether or not you want to put it in your arsenal. So my final thoughts on this weapon are that this thing is a problem solver. This shouldn't be the weapon that you use as your primary source of damage. And the main reason I say that is because the ammo for it is very scarce. It uses the 2mm electron charge packs and they're expensive to buy from a vendor and they don't drop very often out in the wastelands. And if I'm not mistaken, the scrounger perk actually doesn't affect your ability to find 2mm. Don't quote me on that, I may be wrong, but I remember somewhere like the more expensive ammos are not affected by the scrounger perk. So keep that in mind when using this weapon. I break this thing out whenever I need to take down an extremely hard foe in one shot because I don't want to deal with them otherwise. So this is your big power hitter right here. Use it accordingly. And that's going to wrap things up for this video. Uh, as always, I really hope you found this information useful. Uh, if you like this video, do all that YouTube stuff down at the bottom. You know what you're doing. You've been on YouTube for a minute or two. And uh, maybe share it with a friend. Other than that, I've been Deeker Jones, and I hope you guys have a very nice day.